Welcome one and all back to Halo Mystery Week. Ah, it's my second episode out of three of my mystery series. And I do want to give a quick shout out before this video starts to Toe of Ultimate Doom, Demarcation Media, and Mega Gabby. They've all been releasing really cool mystery reviews over the last few days. Mega Gabby's came out today. I'm gonna leave links to all the channels participating in this mystery week down below. And I really hope you can at least take the time to sub to these great content creators. Mystery Week was Toe of Ultimate Doom's idea. And if you didn't know, Mystery Week is where we review a random set, a mystery set. You don't know what's coming. What could it possibly be? And actually, funnily enough, the clue is already here with these two characters. This is the Master Chief and Arbiter Gauss Hog. Oh man, this is a beautiful set. The UNSC Attack Gauss Hog is 229 pieces and released in 2015, you know, alongside all the hype of Halo 5 Guardians. The Arbiter had been teased or ready to be in Halo 5 Guardians, and he was finally gonna team up with the Master Chief once again. Psych! He didn't actually do that at all. That was just 343 just teasing him for marketing purposes. To be fair, the Arbiter was in a lot of missions with Locke. Not a lot. He was in a mission with Locke. But no, he never even reunited with the Master Chief. Only just very briefly in a final cutscene with Dr. Halsey, but really Halsey took the center stage and the Arbiter was just left in the background just looking at the Chief. No interaction whatsoever in the game. Like, 343, I get it. Like, it's hard to weave these narrative stories, but you're really going to bring the Arbiter back and not have him say a single line of dialogue to the Chief? That is not a good move. Not a good move. We will start with the figures for this set, and uh, this set in particular does still fetch a heavy penny online, at least $50 on eBay. And you can see why. I mean, two iconic figures. It is quite similar to the one that comes in the RC Mantis and the SDCC Collector's Pack. I mean, both of these come in that pack alongside Spartan Lock. I really do like the armor on this Arbiter. I know it's a bit janky that he has an arm without any uh, shoulder piece because you do have the clip uh, sort of slot that the piece would attach onto. And I do like that it's the same skin tone as his neck. It shows the little bit of exposed skin he has. The rest is a jumpsuit protecting from damage. There is also some nice painted detail on this thing, the red stripe on his helmet and on his arms. You can sort of get the shoulder and the arm stripe to a line there quite nicely. Of course, this doesn't have any paint on it, but he does have uh, this little bit I want to show on the chest particularly. You would think it was just this one crimson color, but there are two shades. A lighter red can be found underneath his uh, armor there, just in the cracks. Really nice. No detailing on his legs, but a lot of new sculpted molds, particularly this head frill, is really nice. Very menacing. This is the first generation, uh, sort of amongst the first generation of new articulation elites and they did come with the frightening hole in the head. Oh my goodness. That thing is a monster. If you want to compare that to an Arbiter we got in the Arbiter's Quest recently, you can see just how much Mega improved that, uh, that hole. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually, that's always wild to see side by side. The original hole was so dumb. That's unusable. Like, at least with this Arbiter, you could have him unhelmeted. Uh, I still think Mega really does need to push. They should have done it with Gek Lahar, but push for a fully unhelmeted elite head mold, especially with a bit of painted details on the mandibles. They are slipping behind uh, what you can find with 3D printing nowadays. Maybe it was a good first step, but Mega had to improve that quickly. And good thing they did. The leg joints, as you just saw there, are a little bit loose. They can come off quite easily, but this is this figure is about seven years old now, so you can't really complain. Just a nice gold color, nice black undersuit, and good gold trimmings with red highlights. It's a very nice figure. And this Master Chief is also pretty great. You can see that cracked visor, another big ploy on the marketing campaign, like who, or what's gonna happen? No, Chief's just gonna have a very slow fight with Locke and eventually get his visor shattered. It's not gonna be a big deal, but he certainly does look good with it. And yes, you can find that shattered visor again in the SDCC pack. This is a very dark green and I kind of vibe with it. I love the new metallic greens we've got with our new generation of infinite soldiers, but I do uh, respect this dark gritty green and it was a dark gritty time for Halo, so makes sense. These two come with very plain weapons, though I do 
love that Halo 5 energy sword and black base plates. But the real thing to talk about here is this Gauss Hog. We've had so many iterations of Hog before. This is a very similar reimagining of one of the original PAX Warthogs. In 2011, at the event PAX, there was a Halo CE UNSC Warthog released. Came with a gold arbiter, which was a repaint from the Phantom, and an original Mega Bloks uh, Chief, or just General Spartan. There were just so many of them. And it is essentially uh, almost the exact same vehicle. I think Mega really does like, and you can tell that they're a legacy company, right? You can tell they've been making these products for a long time because they like to revisit things. They like to reimagine things in a new light. They did it on their 10th anniversary quite a lot with things like the Aerial Ambush, the Black Recon and Spartan Cat in the blind bags, even the new Chopper with Cat and Bubble Shield, spiritual reprises of old sets. I think Mega really enjoys doing it. And they've done exactly that with this set. Reprise the original CE UNSC Warthog, which has a lot of the exact same trimmings and details, including this little gold highlight here. It's exactly the same, pretty much, except this has a Gauss Hog. The original did technically have a Gauss Hog, but back then a Gauss Hog was literally just attaching like a three pin cannon onto a standard Warthog. So it was barely an actual Gauss Hog. This is a real, uh, you know, many, many pieces have gone into this Gauss Hog uh, turret. I don't actually know how many. This is mainly just one large drum, but this comes apart in four different pieces. One's still inside there. Really like that effect. Really feels like there's some kind of coil charging up the plasma. And then you've got two nice little curved studs going into this large barrel. You have the gold matching the rest of the trimmings on the Warthog, which I respect. And then you've got this little viewfinder. Sometimes this viewfinder, particularly on Covenant vehicles, has printed detailing. This does not. But it is a nice mix between light grays, blacks, and then that gold finish. And I do always love when there's either blacks or whites with then one bold color because it just makes it pop so much. And that gold certainly is the case with this. Swivels round 360. The gold drums are a nice touch. It's quite funny when like who would paint their petrol drums or their diesel, whatever, uh, red or gold even. Like they should be red. It just feels so funny. Then the Master Chief uh, assault rifle in his back. Let's see how well he holds on to this. So yeah, it is meant to be a viewfinder right in the middle there. And there is some kind of drum there. I don't really know what the drum is when uh, this is plasma, but I mean, it could be some battery. I don't really know how it works. He looks through that quite well. A lot of the turrets, when they're actually standing upright, the turret can't really face downwards, but this one can at least uh, point straight down. So it's like he is just controlling with these handles, the full motion of this turret. Maybe one handle is, you know, uh, left and right and one is up and down. So you could see how he can actually target something quite naturally with this thing. Then we've got brown seats. We've got uh, no printed detailing inside. I can't really see on these images whether there's actually any stickers involved in this one. I don't think so. So I think this is unfinished inside. Also, a lot of uh, vehicles in the past have had printed detailing on the headlights. This does not. It's kind of just like a simplistic design, right? And the suspension just up and down on each individual one. There's no bounce. There's no elastic bands giving it any resistance. It just is what it is. Uh, it is what it is. The only printed detailing I can see on this set is these gold stripes. Oh, sorry, chief. <laughs> Fell straight off there. The only finishings I can see are the gold stripes and the UNSC logo on the front. But it is just all rounded a very nice warthog, one that I certainly am happy to have in my collection. I've got one back in England. This one is on the way to someone who purchased it through my uh, Facebook Marketplace sale. And I do actually have a couple of mystery bags left. Uh, a couple of people canceled orders, so please do message me on Facebook if you would like to claim one of those. But all in all, just a very tight set, man. Like a one that I've always enjoyed, one that will always be on my display. Yes, there are little pegs here so you can attach in the back of your torso, but the Arbiter is gonna struggle really to get inside this. Like he's a big bulky elite uh, and it's not really designed for him. The Chief would really be driving and the Arbiter would be on Gauss Hog. I guess traditionally in a game, if you were playing Halo 3, you would play default, player one as the Chief and the Arbiter would be your sidekick. So the Arbiter would always be in the turret. So let me know in the comments down below if you've managed to bag this set in the past. It is just a really beautiful addition to anyone's collection. I wanna give one more shout out to Toa of Ultimate Doom, Demarcation Media, and Mega Gabby. They've all released their mystery reviews right now, and more are coming from other content creators later in the week. I'm gonna leave a pinned comment of all the different content creators that are currently involved in the project. And as always, thank you very much for tuning in today. This was another video with The Domain. You stay awesome, you stay safe out there, folks. Stay tuned for a video on my new channel, Halo Hot Takes, detailing the new Season 3 update that 343 just delivered. Am I happy about it? Not really, but I'm here to, uh, to try and look at the positives and light of the situation. So I'll see you on Sunday for my final mystery review and to look back at 
all the mystery reviews that other content creators have posted in this time, the Master Chief is signing off.